Hello, serious. Welcome back to the same network. Study abroad made easy with Valin Ose. Like I said in my last video, I said anything, if there's an update, I'll definitely update you on my channel. So ensure that you're subscribed if you haven't already. Hit that like button, comment down below, follow us on all of our social media platforms. And of course, join our Telegram community and mailing list as well. Yesterday, someone in the Telegram community shared a link and was saying, you know, it was just basically talking about the in-person um, interview that has been waived. Some people were, were in doubt. Some people were, you know, like the, everybody needed, you know, like a response from me. So I'm making this video to actually speak to you about the in-person visa waiver program and what it's about, the people that are eligible for it. And just basically, we're going to read up on it together so you know more about what's going on. Okay. Um, so I, at this point, I'm just going to share my screen so we can do this together. So yeah. So this was the link. Um, this is my Telegram community. Um, this was the link that the person shared. But whenever I see any link or whenever I hear something, I definitely want to go to the link that would give me what I am looking for. OK, so for this one, I had to go to um, travel.state.gov because this is where the information is. If it's not on here, I don't believe it and I will not share it or just speak about it because it has to come from here. So this update was made yesterday, as you can see. It was last updated um, December 23rd, 2021. So this is pretty, um, this is pretty, um, you know, um, recent, like just yesterday, because today is 24th, and I just woke up. Okay, so let's read up on this, um, you know, um, what this announcement is about. And I'll, I've already broken it down, like, I actually printed some of um, the, the announcement, just so that I can, you know, speak to you more about it. So basically, the title of the announcement states that important announcement on waivers of the interview requirement for certain non-immigrant visas, right? So you know that finding a date for visa interviews have been very like chaotic. It's been, I don't know, a lot of people do not have dates. I've counseled a lot of people and I've had like consultations with so many people that I mentor students actually that are telling me my program starts in January, but I'm seeing a date in April. I'm seeing a date in May. I'm seeing a date in February. What do I do? And that has been the case like since this pandemic thing started. So um, the Department of Homeland Security, basically the US government is trying to help you know, curb these long wait times just so that people can actually come here to study and, you know, even workers and families as well. So I think this is a, a step in the right direction. So I'm very excited about that. But before you become too excited, are you eligible for this um, in-person visa waiver? So let's read on into the announcement and see what's going on there. So it says that the Secretary of State in consultation with the Department of Homeland Security has authorized can you hear, has authorized the consular officers through the end of 2022. So this has been, is going to be on through to the end of 2022. So if you're wondering, oh my God, how long is this going to be for? It's going to be for a whole one year. So if we're looking at, I mean, December is already gone. So let's just say it starts in January. So January through to the end of 2022, which will be um, December. So that's 12 months, to be honest. So that's a great thing. Um, so they instructed consular officers to waive the in-person visa, um, in-person interview requirement for certain temporary employment. So there are different categories of um, visas that this in-person um, um, visa waiver interview um, is made for. So the first category is the setting um, temporary employment non-immigrant visa applicants. And by that, I mean um, the H1, H3, H4, L, O, P, and Q visas. So if you are in this category, then you, you, you qualify to be um, you know, for the in-person interview waiver um, program. However, there are conditions that you have to, to meet first before this can apply to you. So regardless of the category you fall into, whether you are um, in the H1, H3, H4, um, L, L, O, P, Q, or you are in the H2 program, which is the non-agricultural um, or non-agricultural visa type, or you are you fall you are a student, which is the um, F F visa. Let me show you where it stated it on here. F M and 
J visas, then you are also um, eligible for this in-person interview waiver program. And if you're also somebody trying to renew your visa, then you also are eligible as well. But there are conditions that have to be met. I'm going to read out those conditions to you. And, you know, you just get to figure out if you know, you meet all these criteria and then decide what to do with that information. So basically it states that, um, you know, the, um, they instructed the consular officers um, to waive the in-person interview requirement for certain temporary employment non-immigrant visa applicants who have a petition approved by the U.S. Citizen and Immigration Services. So that's the USCIS, okay? And so they are saying that this new authorization applies to temporary workers applying for, like I said, the H1, H3, H4, L, O, P, and Q visas who meet certain conditions. So what are these conditions that you have to meet? Let's read further. So it says that, one thing is critical that you must understand that under this authority, consular officers have the rights, they have the they have to use their discretion to decide if you know if um your visa, your in-person interview should be waived or not. Okay, so it's not like yes, I, I am and I'm, I'm under the H1 or I'm under the H3 or I have the L visa. And so for that reason, my in-person interview must be waived. No, it is the consular officer that is going to decide if that in-person interview is going to be waived or not. So you need to understand that very well, okay? So it says that um, these are the conditions. So what are the conditions? They are saying that if, if you were previously issued any type of visa, that's one. And um, someone who have never been refused a visa unless such refusal was overcome or waived. And someone who have no apparent ineligibility or potential ineligibility, or someone, a first time individual, petition based H1, H3, H4, L, O, P, and Q, who are citizens or nationals of a country that participates in the visa waiver program. So if you are, um, someone who's, who's um, been issued a visa before, who has not been refused a visa before, and or that visa was refused, but maybe you applied again and that visa was um, approved, then you're, that's a condition. Then if you are somebody, you are a first time individual who um, resides, you're a citizen or a national of a country that participates in the visa waiver program. And this is why I think that the Indians might not be able to participate in this because I don't think they participate like the, the visa waiver program thing that they are participating in it. So, um, but you need to find out if your country participates in the visa waiver program. Um, for yourself, okay? Um, so those are the things. And then it's all, it also stated that um, are potentially ineligible and have previously traveled to the United States using an authorization obtained via the ECTA and the ECT, ESTA, sorry. ESTA is the Electronic System for Travel Authorization. So you need to figure out if this applies to you. And if you meet all the, the conditions, then of course you can proceed. Then it, it, it further states that the secretary extended previously approved policies to waive the visa program for certain students. And I know this is where my students are like, oh my God, Valin, get to that point, okay? So yeah, so it was also extended or approved for certain students, okay, professors, research scholars, short-term scholars, or specialists. And by this, I mean the F, M, and academic J visa applicants, okay, through the end of 2022. So this also applies to us international students here, the F, the M, the J, all of us in that category, yes. So you can, from, let's say, January through, the, through to the end of 2022, so December 12 whole months. But again, let's listen, let's read forward, okay? Um, it says one change to the previous policy is that applicants eligible for the waiver authority because they are citizens or nationals of a visa waiver program participating country must have previously traveled to the United States using an authorization obtained via ESTA. Remember I said the ESTA it means the electronic system for travel authorization. So you need to understand there's a change to the previous policy. And what is the change? The change is that if you're an applicant and, um, ap and you are eligible for the waiver authority because you're a citizen of or national of a visa waiver program participating country, then you must have previously traveled to the United States through the ESTA um, you know, system, okay? So you need to read up on that and understand if that applies to you, okay? So they said applicants must apply for a visa in their, in their country of national or residence. 
All right. So like the policy for certain individual petition based visa applicants, consular officers have discretion to waive the um, interview for FM and academic J visa applicants who were previously issued any type of visa and who have never been refused a visa unless such refusal was overcome or waived and who have no apparent ineligibility or potential ineligibility um, to be denied or first time FM and J um, visa applicants who were citizens or nationals of a country that participates in the visa waiver program and who have previously traveled to the United States via the ESCA authorization provided they have no, no apparent ineligibility or potential ineligibility. So let me read out, let me explain to you what these conditions are. Okay, just like the for the category with the H1, H3, L, P, O, Q, that visa, those visa categories, this also apply, the conditions also applies to the um, F, M, and J visa categories as well. So the conditions that are stated or that must be met are, I think there are three or four of them, okay? It says like the policy for certain individual based visa applicants. So consular officers, first of all, they have the right to waive your in-person in interview, right? Okay, um, and um, that right will only be exhibited if the app applicants were previously issued any type of visa. That's number one condition. And applicants who have never been refused a visa unless such refusal was overcome or waived. That's a second condition. And applicants um, who have no apparent ineligibility or potential ineligibility. Now that condition is a bit vague, but I believe what they are trying to say is that if you've done something bad, or maybe you, you're, you have a case or something that might hinder you, that might be an issue because when the consular officer is going through your documents, they can you know, use their discretion to say, okay, this person, this issue might be a reason for not to waive this in-person um, interview. So that's why it's very important that whatever you do here in the United States, you have to be very careful. Um, then the next condition is um, a first time FM and academic J visa. So this is where the aspiring students come in. If, if this is your first time and you're applying, then it's you're, you're eligible, all right? You're eligible to for that in-person in interview to be waived, okay? So the, that's what they said here. First time FM and academic J visa applicants who are citizens or nationals of a country that participates in the visa waiver program, okay? So even if you're a first-time person and your country does not um, participate in the visa waiver program, then of course your in-person interview will not be waived, okay? And again, it says that and um, applicants who have previously traveled to the United States via an ESTA authorization, provided they have no apparent ineligibility or potential ineligibility. So if you can meet these conditions and you fall within the F, M or J visa category, then of course your in-person, chances are that your in-person interview might be waived. And you know, this is going to be the, the, the situation from now to the end of 2022. So the case of like, oh, I can't see any visa date. Oh, how do I get my visa? Oh, will my visa be approved? Yeah, there's still that um, fear of will my visa, because understand that the in-person interview being um, waived does not mean that your visa will be approved automatically, no. It, it, I think what, what happens here is that this whole backlog thing that they've been trying to um, you know, um, um, clear and also the whole standstill and everything that's been going on and this issue with not finding dates and all of that, it's going to clear all, all of that. So that's a good thing. But it is not saying, it did not state anywhere that your visa is going to be approved once you are, once your in-person interview has been waived. So understand that. So you are still going to be judged based, based on the documents you submit, based on your bank statements, based on your sponsor, based on, I believe that when you're you know, applying online, they'll ask you certain questions, your DS-160. Um, so this is where the DS-160 application form is becomes very critical. And I have my, uh, my services where I can and help you to fill out your DS-160 form if you need me to also help you apply for your this program as well. My, my links are in the description down below. You can book a consultation with me. You can book any of my services that you need. And those of you who already have dates as well for your visa interviews and you want me to prepare, you want to check if you are ready or, or not, you can click the link in the description down below to have a mock visa interview with me as well. And you can, because this is very important and there's going to be updates as we progress, you need to follow us on all of our social media platforms so you don't miss out on any 
any of the information we have here. Okay. Um, so if you need any service at all, whether you're a current student or an intern, um, a current a current student or an aspiring um, international student, I have several services that can benefit you as well. So click the link in the description down below, or send me an email, or follow me on all of my social media platforms. Send a DM, and I'll definitely get back to you. So um, moving on, it, there's it, another category of um, visa type that this applies to as well. So it states that the, the previous authority allowing um, for waiver interview of certain H2. Now H2 is the temporary agricultural, agricultural and non-agricultural workers applicants. So who, um, yeah, so H2 visas are for temporary agricultural, oh, temporary agricultural and non-agricultural workers. Okay, so basically um, what they are saying is that if you also fall within this category, right, um, the um, in-person interview waiver has also been extended for this visa type through the end of 2022. So you are also eligible. Of, of course, you have to meet the um, you have to meet the conditions as well. Now, this is where um, you fall in if you are somebody who's trying to renew your visa. Now, applicants renewing any visa within 48 months of expiration are also eligible for the interview waiver. So um, you're in the US, your visa has expired, and you don't know if, you know, normally you'd have to travel home, but now they are saying that the in-person interview has been waived. So they didn't say a lot for the um, people trying to renew their visas, regardless of your visa type. They didn't say so much, but they are saying that if your visa, you're renewing, re renewing your visa for eight months of expiration, um, within 48 months of that visa being expired, then you are eligible to apply for the in-person, um, you know, in-person interview waiver as well. So basically, go and read up more on this so that you know what to do, how to proceed, and just basically keep in touch. If you're, you know, like I said, ensure that you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on anything. Um, so understand that ultimately the um, consular officer, they have the, it is on that, you know, they have the authority, they have, they have to use their discretion to determine if this visa, um, in-person visa interview should be waived for you or not. So do not just feel like, okay, yes, I fall within the category, I meet all the requirements, then my visa has been, uh, my in-person interview must be waived. No, the consular officer, your views have to make that decision. Then secondly, if your in-person interview is waived, that does not automatically mean that your visa is also going to be approved. So understand that, which means that you need to take every other aspect of your um, application process very seriously. If you need help, if you need to consult a visa coach like myself or an academic coach um, like myself as well, you know, you need to do that. It's it's the return on investment is massive. We've had over 98 to 99 percent success rate so far, and I will advise you to join our Telegram group for aspiring and current international students as well. So um, I just wanted to share this information. If there's any update that will come up in the future, I will let you guys know. Um, but for now, this is what we have so far. I just woke up and I felt like I should make this video so I can get ready for my trip. I'm, I need to travel for the for the Christmas. So tomorrow is Christmas. So uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. I love you. Thank you all so much for the support. Um, you know, keep supporting, keep liking, keep sharing. And I'll see you guys in my next video. But until we do that, until we see you again in my next video, I remain Valin Osse and I pledge to never give up. And I hope that you do the same. Bye, guys.